Hi there, I'm Tanya from IMDT and this is Judy. Welcome to the muzzle training video. So there's different, loads of different types of muzzle, loads of different brands. Um, so we've got a couple of them here. So we've got um, Baskerville muzzles, uh, which they're kind of the basket type muzzles. So your dog can take treats through um, and they can pan in the summer. So the tape muzzles hold their mouth closed, which isn't a great idea. So um, I would suggest basket type muzzles. Um, so these are the Baskervilles. Baskerville do a different um, style as well. It's slightly heavier actually, but it also has a strap up over the top. So a little bit of added security on that one. We have this kind of muzzle. This is it's called a Don Pare. And that was great for um, my lurcher very lightweight so you've also got truffle muzzle the muzzle movement and gape now some of those companies will make specifically for the dog's uh, face shape you know size all that kind of stuff to work out the size for your dog um, or for the dog that you're muzzle training um, i would avoid putting the muzzle on to size because that could create that negative experience for their first experience with the muzzle. We want it to be the complete opposite. So um, you can, there is measurements on each of their websites. So look at each individual muzzle's uh, sizing guides and work from that rather than putting the muzzle on the dog. But I'm going to pop the muzzle on the floor. No food's required. I don't want to put food around the muzzle to start with because I don't want the dog to be drawn into the food but not be sure about the item, the muzzle itself. So rather than create conflict, I'd rather the dog just gets to explore the muzzle on, on their own. So I've got my muzzle on the floor here. Let's let Judy come and have a look. Here she comes. Oh, she's having a nice old sniff. You see that tail is going. So my first layer is about creating a positive association. So I have a muzzle behind my back um, and I've got chicken and I've got squeezy cheese here. So, so two things that Judy loves. So here we go. So you'll notice that as I'm producing the muzzle, I'm producing it to the side. I'm not shoving it in her face. So just make sure that that's really clear um, when you're training for this. This appears followed by something good and off it goes. And then I'm gonna do it with the other hand. This arrives followed by something good and maybe a different location. This arrives followed by something good. So do loads of layers of that. That's really worth working on. We're looking for, you see a little tail going. Um, so we're looking for a positive response to, a, to interacting with the muzzle. We want to be relaxed and happy. And maybe I can see her moving towards the muzzle a little bit. That tells me she's ready to move on. So what else I can do during the day is I can pair the muzzle with other stuff that she likes. So I can do the pairing that I just showed you, but also I could show her the muzzle followed by her bowl of food. So now what you'll see is we're beginning to mark and reward our dog moving towards the muzzle. Um, so you'll need your marker here. So your yes, your good or your click. And what you'll see um, to start with is that I'm bringing the muzzle out to the left or the right. And I'm saying yes when she looks at it, um, and then I'm rewarding from the other side. Following fr on from this, I'm going to start presenting the muzzle between my knee area, because this is the most um, accessible area for Judy to start um, offering more and popping her head in towards the muzzle. So that's where I'm going to start um, placing the muzzle. Now you can see that I'm starting to reward her back in the position that she offered. So I'm not going to reward her right in the muzzle because she hasn't offered me that yet. But I am working towards that. Um, and as she pops her nose in a centimetre further and a centimetre further, I can then start to reward eventually. When she's offered her full nose in, I can start rewarding through the end of the muzzle, making sure that I am marking um, what I'm looking for before I then feed her. So sometimes you will have um, dogs that have worn muzzles before, um, but their association with muzzles isn't a good one, um, or they've had a bad experience during uh, their muzzle training. Um, so a really great um, stuff that you can do and games that you can do with um, your dog or the dogs that you're training is to, to our dogs, it's just another exercise. So to be targeting other objects, so it's confidence to put their nose and stuff. So you could have things like yogurt pots, um, cones, or anything else that you can think 
um, that would help build a dog's confidence to put their nose in things before you start moving over to maybe a new muzzle. Well, I'm going to offer Judy the yoga pots um, and now everything's the same as my normal training. Yes. Something else to consider here when you're choosing other items is that you look for items that are wide enough and deep enough so your dog doesn't inadvertently get a boop on the nose while you're doing your training. A really great idea with your muzzle training is with some dogs that maybe have issues around coming in close to humans, um, into this kind of sort of training area that we've you've seen all the muzzle training be done to this point um is that you could actually start your muzzle training where the dog is targeting the muzzle away from you like that so it's a really nice way of separating out the muzzle training and the targeting of the muzzle to how the dog may potentially feel about strangers or humans and working on the two things separately um and then when you're ready popping the two things together So you can see that I've chosen to use a clicker for this. Um, it's just a good example of um, a marker that you could use if you've got multiple people training um, a dog for consistency. Um, with this training as well, you could do this training so the human is further away. But it's a really nice alternative to our usual muzzle training. So now what I'm going to start to do is add duration to Judy choosing to put her nose in the muzzle. I'm going to start with one second before I mark and reward and then I'm going to gradually build that up to 10 seconds. And then what I'll do is I'm going to vary anything between one and 10 seconds. So we're just varying how long um, she puts her nose in before she hears her marker and gets her reward. Yes. So now I'm going to do one second, then I'll work on to two, and so on, up to ten seconds. Yes. 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 So now we're going to start looking at adding the verbal cue. So I'm going to say the word muzzle, um, then I'm going to produce the actual muzzle itself. She'll pop her nose in, um, and then I'm going to mark a reward. Um, I'm just going to do this in, because I want it to be predictable to her when I say the word muzzle, and then I produce it, that actually what that means. But also, if in future, I might want to change the muzzle. Um, yeah, so just another layer of predictability for her. So I'll pop that behind here. Muzzle. Yes. Quite a lot of cheese that time. Muzzle. Yes. So now we've been adding the verbal cue. So Judy, we've got this extra layer of predictability for Judy. Um, she's now trying to bring me stuff. <laughs> um, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to ask her for other behaviours that she knows. So for example, we might do a sit, I'll mark and reward that. We might do a down, mark and reward that. And then I might do a muzzle. Okay, so sit. Yes. Spin. Yes. Down. Yes. Muzzle. Yes. Oops. So the first layer when she came in to have a look at the muzzle was about the sight of the muzzle, maybe the smell of the muzzle. Um, she's now had the muzzle on her nose, so she's got used to the feel of the muzzle. Um, but in terms of the sound of the muzzle, what we'd be looking at here is the sound of the clips um, opening and closing. So we're just going to work on that. I'll start that off quite far away from her, so I'll do clip equals something good. So 
So we really wanted to like the sound of it too. So now we're going to start working on doing the straps up. So I'm going to say the word muzzle, present the muzzle, Judy can pop her head in. I'm then going to reach around the back of her head. Then I'm going to use my marker and then feed her through the muzzle. So I'll do one side and then what I'll do is I'm going to do the other side. So again, I'll say the word muzzle, present the muzzle, Judy, uh, reach my hand around the back of her head and then I'm going to mark and reward through the muzzle. Then what we can look to do is I will say the word muzzle. I'm going to present the muzzle and instead of um, just lifting my hand, I'm going to lift the strap round. So I'll lift the strap round, let go, mark and then reward. And then I'll do the same with the other side. So basically I'm just getting the dog used to um, the feel of the strap around the side of their head. Um, and then what I could start to work on is lifting both the straps. Now I'm going to work on closing the straps. Now that's going to be my marker, so I don't need to use a marker anymore. So that click will um, tell me that, tell the dog that the job is, that you've done it and good stuff's arriving. And that's why the muzzle's on. Muzzle. Click the muzzle up. Just holding underneath, just keeping it stable. <laughs> she's got her head back, she's licking. <laughs> now I'll take it off. Now I have to contend with these big ears, so I'm going to clip the muzzle on under her ears. Muzzle. Hang on, nearly there. Lovely. Okay, so now what I'm looking at doing is adding duration while she's wearing the muzzle. So how I'm going to do this is um, I'm going to offer the muzzle, she pop, offer to pop her head in, do the straps up as per the last um, few steps that we worked through. Um, and then what I'm going to do is deliver a squeeze of cheese through the mu muzzle. I'll probably do three squeezes and then the aim there is to start to stretch. Um, those durations between each delivery of cheese. Okay. Muzzle. Pop this on. So we'll do one little squeeze there. Another little squeeze. And another little squeeze. And then off it comes. And like I said before, um, you don't need a marker anymore because you've got the click of the clip and that can act as your marker. Excellent. Right, okay. So I'm going to do the same and I'm going to have three seconds between each delivery of a squeeze. Muzzle. There we go. So gradually working on your duration of them wearing the muzzle but having a lovely time while they're doing so. So basically what you can also see when Judy's in there, I really need to work on her duration, that's probably exactly where she's at. But what you can see is that the way she's holding herself isn't quite as natural as it is when she hasn't got it on. So what I would need to work on next would be the duration, gradually building up the duration. But also what I'd need to work on is movement. So natural movements while she's wearing it. Now to do that, what I would do is exactly the same thing. But when I'm delivering her reward, so let's say I, I offer her the muzzle, she pops her nose in, um, and then when I'm ready to deliver the reward, I might deliver some here. So she moves like she is now. I'll bag her a little bit. She'll be most disappointed. Um, and then I might do the next one over here. So there's some, so there's some natural movement while she's got the muzzle on and the good stuff's still arriving. Um, yeah, so basically they'll work on that. And what we might also do is ask her to do other stuff she knows really well. So for example, if she knows a sit really well, ask her for a sit, and then I would mark and reward her through the muzzle. Um, and then I might take the muzzle off. So there'd be other stuff that she knows really well that I would like her to better do while she's wearing the muzzle, um, because they're going to be need to um, enjoy wearing it, but also doing normal stuff that they would do in everyday life. Now, other stuff that you would work on would maybe be a recall or lead walking with the muzzle on because these are the occasions where they will be wearing the muzzle while you're asking them to do those kind of things.
So there you have it, our muzzle training video. If you would like an IMDT qualified dog trainer or behaviourist to help you, go to www.imdt.uk.com and go to the Find a Trainer page.